Hello, everyone. How are you? Uh, how's how's everyone doing today? Wagwan, Sakpasi, Ola. Good evening. I have not been live on this channel for quite some time now. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> the Mafia Speaks. I haven't done one in a while. I will do it eventually. I ain't gonna lie, I haven't felt like doing it. A lot of those stories are kind of draining. I'm not even gonna lie, but we'll, we'll be back soon with it, okay? We'll be back soon. But for today's video, we're gonna be doing um a live QA regarding YouTube. So funny enough, I just realized I was supposed to be doing these types of like boss babe YouTube type situations on here. Um, but I was doing them on Facebook. I don't know why. Now I just realized I need to start doing them on here. So shout out to everybody that signed up for this on Facebook because I was having technical difficulties on Facebook. So I decided to bring it here on instead. Bring it on here instead. Um, so yeah, I, I deeply apologize because this was supposed to be like literally 25 minutes ago and I was supposed to be 25 minutes in. But like I said, technical difficulties. So from here on out, we're doing this on YouTube because there's no problems on YouTube. Okay, StreamYard, you have no problem. Okay, there's no problems here on StreamYard. So for those of you guys who are interested in YouTube, welcome. We're going to be doing this type of content here on my YouTube channel. You guys are not aware, I do have a business called Media Hustle, where essentially I do give you guys advice on um, people do schedule consultations and things like that with me about growing their YouTube channels. It is a regular thing. I've been doing it for, I think, two years now. It's been a while. Um, I give social media advice. I help people with their YouTube channels, things like that. And I do monthly webinars. Next Tuesday, I'll be doing a webinar. Um, and it's going to be on essentially how to get 100K in under a year. But I usually do a free webinar for those who cannot afford it. The webinars are $25, but we are in tight times and some people cannot afford the $25. And that is okay. So for today specifically, um, there are some people that already asked in their questions or whatever. And then, of course, there are some general questions mixed in. Um, feel free to type in your... Sage just go. Jesus Christ. There are some questions that um, already are in my little slides or whatever. Feel free to type them in the comments. Hi, y'all. Shout out some people that are saying hi. Hey, 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 hey. Um, you can type in your, your comments or whatever the case may be, um, and I will get to them. Let's just get into the slides. This really should not take too long. Um, yeah, so since I do have a lot of ADHD going on, uh, I guess let the slides go i guess i'll stop if it's like relevant to the question so let's just um start here oh you guys can still see me i think you guys can still see me right so boom um how to get 100k subscribers on youtube in one year right so as daunting as it looks people do this all the time some people get a million subscribers in a year um a lot of people think that it's not possible i did this um, i went from six thousand subscribers to hundred thousand subscribers in less than a year. I got way more actually by the end of the year. I don't remember where I was by the, this cat, by the end of that year. Um, but I know for a fact by February, um, my, my channel started to blow up in that March. By the end of that year, that's when I started my whole initiative of I'm going to get 100K on my main channel. And I, I hit 100K by, if I'm not mistaken, maybe August or September. So from March to August or September, I had hit 100K. Um, by this, so that means by the end of the year, I definitely had well over 100k, right? Um, and now with the different various streams of media that we have, it's very easy to hit well over 100k, right? If you're not lazy and you plan effectively and things like that, right? So it, it, it's a lot. So basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over some basics, um, and then you guys can feel free to, you know, ask your questions and things like that, right? So. Let me just go over the basics and then I will get to your questions. So let's get through the disclaimers because I ain't here to sell no dreams. All right. Uh, growing an audience does take a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. Um, YouTube is hard. Okay. You're going to be broke for a very long time. Contrary to popular belief, a lot of people like to sell this dream of, oh, you're going to be living la vida loca. You're going to be on the beach um, sipping uh, mojitos and all of this shit. Yeah, and you're gonna be broke as fuck too with a negative bank account. I'll, I'll tell you this right now. Um, doing YouTube full time, it took me 
maybe five years before I did that. And I was broke for at least three before that happened. Um, you're not going to be swimming in dough the way people say. Uh, it's a lot. It, it's also not for everyone. There's been a lot of people who book consultations with me for YouTube. They took my advice. They took it to another platform and they blew up on there. Took my YouTube advice, took it to TikTok, blew up. Took my YouTube advice, took it to Pinterest, blew up. Took my YouTube advice, took it to LinkedIn, blew up, which, oh, this cat just, okay, her food. <laughs> you know, they, they took my advice, applied it somewhere else. YouTube is just not for everyone, okay? Um, you can find success on other platforms. Do not put your eggs all in the YouTube basket, okay? Um, this advice is from my personal experience and from research. Please do your own research. Research is extremely important when it comes to social media. Um, a lot of people just wing it. A lot of people just think, oh, I'm about to... I just came back. <laughs> a lot of people think I'm popping, I'm cute, I look good. Who wouldn't want to follow me? And then they get on social media and they, they do like, oh, I don't understand why is nobody following me. It's because you didn't do your research. Social media may look like it's all fun and games. It may look like all people do on social media is get in front of the camera, edit and post, but it's a lot more that goes into it than just filming a video and posting it, right? Um, there's no guarantee that you will grow from my advice, okay? I'm just telling you what I know. I'm just telling you from experience, and I also did go to school for journalism as well as public relations. So also, just because I kind of went to school for a lot of the shit doesn't necessarily mean you're going to grow from this because social media trends do change, right? Um, and I'm not going to sell you no BS. I'm not here to sell you on no dreams. And you could do whatever you want with your channel. Um, I just want to help you grow faster. Okay. That, that's, it is what it is. Right. So here are the basics, right? Point blank period. You have to plan. Don't win shit. Don't do what I did <laughs> for a very long time. I'm a very type A personality type of person. I love to plan my life, but at the same time, when it came to YouTube, I would just get in front of the camera and like do shit. I would just be like, oh my God, I look cute today. Let me film my outfit. Uh, oh my God, like um, this just happened in the news. Let me talk about it. Yeah. Plan. Um, plan the content you're doing. Um, plan. Do not. I, when I'm talking, do not just do shit just to do shit, Okay. Always have your short and long-term goals. Where do you want to be by the end of this month? Where do you want to be by the end of this year? Don't just be like, oh, I want to have a million subscribers by next year. How you going to get to that million? Where do you want to be short-term, long-term? Also, again, research, research, research. What is your genre? What is your niche? What is your competition? A lot of people just think, oh, niche, niche, niche. I just want to do fashion videos. Okay, now what type of fashion videos? There's fashion shorts. There's fashion hauls. There's fashion critiquing. There's like, there's so many things in fashion. And then there's fashion, like the real fashion world. Like, you know, the fashion that don't look like fashion. Like when people wear a trash bag, they say that's fashion. That's not what the fashion to me, but hey, that's fashion. That's the real fashion world. And then there's fashion, like practical fashion. There's thrift fashion. There's fashion, like affordable fashion. There's dupe fashion. There's there's so many different fashions. You have to be very, very specific. Like when you say, oh, I want to do fashion videos. Narrow it down. The more you narrow down, the more successful you'll be. Do you want to do plus size fashion? Like, what is it that you want to do? You know, you have to make sure that your content is quality and you have to also make sure that people care. If people aren't looking for your content, you're not going to grow. If people don't give a fuck, then people don't give a fuck. You can't make people give a fuck. Well, you can in certain instances, you can, but it depends. It, 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 it's hard. It, it's easier. And yes, I am leaving this up. Uh, it's easier to make content that people care about and that people are already looking for than to create your own lane, if that makes sense, right? Like if you're already, this is the thing that I always tell people, right? Tesla was not the first electric car. Walmart was not the first Walmart. Staples was not the first Staples. Everybody did the same shit that everybody else was doing. They just made it better. And that's why we only, we only know whatever it is that's popping right now. Stop focused on being the best, the only, the better, 
and being original and just do what everybody else is doing and do it better because that's what everybody else did. Okay. You got to do something that everybody else is doing so damn good that everybody forgets what everybody else did. Okay. That's the whole point. Right. So it, it's, it's very, it, it's very difficult to do, but once you get the hang of it, you get there, right? You have to have a focus for people to continuously come back and create a binge chain. That's basically the best way to grow. Um, you have to create that one thing that people are going to continuously come back for you for. So if you know damn well, you know how to talk and you like to talk and you could talk for literally 30 minutes straight, find shit that you know damn well. You could talk for 30 minutes straight on. This is why for me, short form content, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but people, I, I know how to talk and I like to talk. I was doing short form videos on Instagram for a short time. For whatever reason, those videos do very well for me on Instagram. Um, I forgot that I was doing that for a short amount of time. I forgot, but those videos do well for me. But at the same time, it's hard for me to find things that I care to talk about for a minute. I like long form content because I can say what the fuck I want to take for a long time, right? But there's some people that could get whatever it is, get the point across in one minute. So clearly TikTok reels, stuff like that, they, they do very well for them, right? But there's some people that they can't talk for that long. So it's like, you know, like you have to find your thing. If talking isn't for you, if talking is for you, if trying on clothes is for you, if trying clothes is not for you, if cooking is for you, you know, you have to find what it is that you're good at. So those basics have to be weaved out. You do not, I, I repeat, you do not want to find that out while you're in front of the camera um, at all. So steps for planning a successful YouTube channel, because I know a lot of people, um, they, they, they be lost and they be confused. Oh, where do I start? What do I do? Okay, so first, find your genre, style, and your niche, right? What type of videos do you want to do? That's your genre and your style, right? Do you want to do rants, reactions, sit downs, get ready with me, hauls? Like, what is the genre of video you're doing? Okay, if you want to do sit downs, all right, I'm going to do sit downs. Where are you going to sit down at? This is the main thing a lot of people be doing. Uh, I want to sit down videos. All right, uh, my, my, my walls are ugly. My wall, my house is ugly. I got nowhere to sit down. The, the, the kids is loud as hell. My house is very rowdy. Da, 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 da. Okay, well, if your house is rowdy and you know the kids is ghetto and you know you, how are you gonna do sit down videos? How are you gonna do sit down videos then? You gotta think. Are you gonna go to the community center? Are you gonna go to the library? Are you gonna go to your friend's house? Are you gonna go to your boyfriend's house? Like you have to think about these things. If you're gonna do haul videos, this is something I wanted to do. That didn't work out for me. I'm gonna get to that. If you're gonna do Cooking videos. Do you have space in your kitchen to do the cooking videos? You don't even need that much space, but some people, they get intimidated. They see other people's videos and they're like, oh, my videos aren't gonna look like these people. That's an advantage you could use. You have to see what type of videos you're gonna do, you know? And then of course your niche, cooking, hair, movie reviews, whatever. Um, and then the name. the name, the name, the name, the name, the name, the name, 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 name. Do not start your channel without having a name. I know this might be a little controversial for a lot of people. Um, I think your name is extremely important because this is clearly how people find you. Um, you don't want to be like starting out as Stephanie Renee and then next thing you know, next month, your name is I Love Makeup and Reviews. Like you don't want to do some shit like that, right? So you really want to pick a name that has a lot to do with what you're doing and who you are you could just pick your name you could just pick a moniker like you, your name is really important so if you're gonna spend any time on anything if it's gonna take you three fucking years to start a youtube channel it should be on the damn name um that's extremely important it should be something easy for people to remember easy for people to spell don't be like me picking something like mademoiselle because no one could ever say or spell my damn name but i don't give a fuck i love my name but like a lot of people cannot spell my name um, and it's always an annoyance, but it's like, it's a little too late for me to spell my name. I mean, to change my name. So I was like, whatever. Um, I still love it, but it is something very personal to me. So that's why I chose it. Whatever it is that your name is, make sure that you're going to keep it. You're going to love it. And it's something that is iconic to you. Right. 
hype. Oh, well, of course, create the damn channel, right? Um, create the channel and hype that channel up. I feel like everybody skips this step depending on what it is that, that that's going on with them. I'm tired of people. Um, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I'm tired of people with this nonsense. I don't want to wait to know I have a YouTube channel. I don't want anybody to... Unless you're in high school, because if you're in high school, there's an exception to this because high school could be brutal. People might make fun of you, but I mean, everybody wants to be a YouTuber now. So it's like, if you have a YouTube channel, I would, I would think you're probably cool. Back when I was in high school, people would have clowned you for having a YouTube channel. So I, but still, people could be a little weird about that. But it's like, if you're not going to be confident about what you got going on, you're not going to be confident about you having a YouTube channel, especially as a grown ass adult, unless you're talking about something like literally extremely personal to you traumatic for you i don't know what like you gotta be confident about what you're doing so hype that shit up put it on instagram twitter facebook myspace tumblr high five pinterest hype that channel up before there's any videos on it tell your auntie your grandma your dog your cat your ferret your bunny tell the devil himself that you have a channel Hype that channel up. Your first 10 subscribers should be people that you know. Everybody you know should be following that channel. And I kid you not, having a YouTube channel will literally tell you who your friends are. <laughs> and who your family is. I always tell people, you want to know if you have friends, start a YouTube channel. This is how you see who will hate her. This is how you see who really supports you. Because you going to see. When you say, oh, did you see my video? Hey, could you watch my video? Hey, could you share my videos? Their response is going to tell you. Um, of course, while you're hyping this channel and before you post any videos, you want to establish your filming and your posting frequency. First of all, if you think you're going to be posting once a week, don't even start the YouTube channel. That's not enough. Unless you're an animation channel. Like, and I'm very sure nobody watching this is a damn animation channel because that shit is very difficult. And that's a very, very rare skill set. Animation channels literally post once a month. If you're an animation channel, then that's a whole um, different thing. Animation channels, yeah, y'all can get away with posting once a month, honestly. But everybody else, two times a week minimum. And no and, ifs, or buts. Establish, you post it two times a week. I don't want to hear it. Establish when you're going to film, when you're going to edit. Are you going to film Monday, Tuesday, whatever the other days of the week are right now? Because I can't do it. My head hurts. Okay. When are you going to film? When are you going to shoot? Where are you going to shoot? You got to you, you gotta think of these things. Because you know what happens when you don't think of these things? Oh, shit. It's Monday. I said, I, I told myself I was going I was gonna film today. Oh, oh, oh shit. Oh, damn. These these baby kids is over today. And it's mad loud. And oh, my God. Damn. I, I said I was going to go over to Sierra house to film. And oh, oh, my God. I forgot to call Sierra. Now Sierra's at my boyfriend's house. And I ain't got nowhere to film. All right. All right. Next week. Next week comes. Oh, my God. I said I was going to go to Sean house to film. Oh, my God. Now I can't. Oh, my God. Now it's, it's thunderstorming outside. I ain't got a video for this week. Next week. Oh, my God. Damn. My second day to film was Thursdays. Oh my God, Thursday. I can't, I can't, I can't. <sighs> all right, all right. Oh, uh, oh my God. All right, all right. Uh, postpone, postpone. All right, all right. And then postpone, 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 postpone. You know why? Because you didn't plan. Because you didn't plan. All the baby kids in the house. You ain't call Sierra. You ain't call Sean. You ain't call nobody because you didn't plan. Don't do that shit. Don't do that shit. Plan. What days you gonna post? Where are you gonna film? And then, of course, how are you going to edit this shit? Is it going to be Windows Movie Maker? Is it going to be iMovie? Is it going to be Final Cut Pro? Is it going to be Adobe? Do you know how to use these things? Do not get caught up with these big YouTubers who know how to use this shit. Y'all be thinking, oh, my favorite YouTuber uses Final Cut. Do you know how to use Final Cut? Do you? Do you? That shit's hard. And it's like $200, $300. You don't know how to use it. Don't even waste your time. You're going to be sitting there fumbling with a whole bunch of crap that you don't know how to use for no reason. Wasting your time. Get it how you live. Stick to that iMovie. Stick to that Windows Movie Maker. Stick to that Filmora. It be that said. You're not competing with these big ass YouTubers anyway. Okay? You're competing with yourself. Do not look at anybody else. And of course, this is another big one. 
<laughs> the last step. And notice how there's one step missing. Plan out at least five videos and make sure to pick a release date for the first video. The biggest mistake I see every YouTuber do when they first start their channel. I'm gonna curse my I'm gonna post my first video. Three weeks later, their next video. Four months later, their third video. One year later, they four. Before you even post that first video, have other videos lined up that are relative to the other videos. I'm not playing with y'all. Okay, we're not gonna be doing get to know me tag for the first video because nobody cares because nobody knows you. I'm we're not doing that. We're not doing QA either because nobody knows you. Nobody knows you. We, we, we want the people clicking. We want to create a binge chain. Nobody gives a fuck. Get to know me. We don't care about Sally from Idaho with a dog named Cassie. We don't give a fuck about Shaniqua from Cincinnati with a cat named Sage. Sorry, Sage, that is your name. We don't care. Tell them a juicy story time. Cook them some lasagna. Do something. But we don't want no get to know me tag. And then the next one is a haul from Fashion Nova. And then the next one is you talking about your crazy ass baby daddy. And then the next one a year later it is a college vlog. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we? Have five videos that are relative to each other. So if we're going to be, we're just going to use story times, right? Say, you know, you got a crazy ass life. We're just going to use random stories. Um, how I got pregnant at 16. How I told my parents I was pregnant at 16. How I coped with being a new mother at 16. Routine, getting ready with a two-year-old. That's already four videos. Then fifth video should be get to know me tag. Because by this point, you already bonded with all of those young mothers or mothers to be. Then people care about you. You know what you just did? You created a binge chain. This is how people grow so fast. You are creating a connection with people. You are giving people what they want what they need, you created a niche, you already set that genre, you have everything in one cohesive family. You're doing story times, you're doing sit downs, you're bonding with your audience, you're telling them, hey, listen, this is my personal story, I got pregnant at 16, this is how I told my parents, I was scared, I was fucking a second, I shouldn't have been sucking, fucking a second, but I was fucking a second, this is what happened to me, if it's happening to you, this is what you do. This is how I deal with my little baby. She too. Yeah, it's hard. Woohoo. Y'all want to know about me? Here you go. Literally, I just found some girl that was doing that recently. And it's sad because, like, her baby daddy died. And, yo, I, 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 I never got pregnant at that age. And I'm sitting here watching it. Sad as hell. Like, but people eat that shit up. It's a personal connection. It's a personal connection. Find whatever your personal connection is. If you do a cooking channel, say you lost 48 pounds. I don't know. How I lost 48 pounds on what? Doing what? You have to be more specific. How I lost 48 pounds on keto, right? So how I lost 48 pounds on keto. My diet to lose 48 pounds. My workout routine to lose 48 pounds. Best diet plans to lose weight fast. Losing weight Q&A. Five videos. So you see what I did there? Five videos. You have to create videos that people are going to watch again and again and again and again and again and again and again. To create that I want more. I love this person. They're creating things that I care about. Oh my God. Binge chain. So I'm going to get into that a little bit. So things to remember, right? It's not about appearance. I'm tired of everybody with this. I need a YouTube camera. I need a YouTube logo. I need this intro. I need, oh my God, I can't stand going to watch a new YouTuber. I love new YouTubers, by the way. 
I be watching new YouTubers all the time. I be commenting on their stuff. Like you can have 10 subscribers. If I like the video, I like the video. But what pisses me off is these ugly ass long behind intros that just look paced together. But then meanwhile, all I hear is, um, like, yeah, guys, um, yeah, like, why don't we work on not doing that? And, and not having this long ass drawn ass intro for no reason and this this extra logo for what and then they, they got all this equipment they can't even use right you you going in and out of focus stop it don't don't spend no money on no banner don't spend no money on no logo don't spend no money on your equipment because what's gonna happen is you're not gonna know how to use any of that shit you won't go return it it's gonna be on facebook market how much cameras do we see that cost eight hundred dollars but now we see them for four hundred dollars Listen, I've copped out. It's funny. I, I've literally bought so many cameras on Facebook Market because people, oh, I started a YouTube channel, but it didn't work out. I know. Because people jump to buy the equipment. It's the excitement. Don't do it. Research, 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 and do not compare yourself to other creators. You're not competing with them whatsoever, okay? Stay in your own lane. Pay attention to what you're doing. Do not look up or down. Look forward. Point blank, period. You're not competing with not a damn soul, okay? Um, let me look at some of your questions right quick before I move forward. So, somebody said, nah, 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 nah. Um, would you recommend to build traction, like start on TikTok and move on YouTube? So, this is the thing, right? With this right here, this is the thing. This works for a lot of people, but it doesn't work for a lot of people. So, I had a friend, um, and I talk about this a lot, right? She took my YouTube advice, she brought it to TikTok, she blew up to over 100. No, 600,000. So that's the thing. Me and her started on YouTube same time. She was bigger than me. I surpassed her. She stopped doing YouTube for a very long time. She took my YouTube advice. She took it to TikTok. She got over 600,000. She cannot bring those subscribers on TikTok or followers on TikTok to be subscribers on YouTube. Personally, I think she's not trying hard enough, but translating followers from one platform to another extremely difficult damn near impossible a lot of the time i've seen it happen for a lot of people but very difficult to do i feel like it's possible though because i've seen it but it's like it depends on what you're doing right i feel like if you're gonna do similar content or if you're gonna trail the content like if you're gonna do like oh my god y'all nail salon horror story did it out part one part two go watch part four or go watch the full story on YouTube and then you get people to like follow you over there. Maybe, but it doesn't work for everyone. It doesn't work for everyone. I see people do a lot with Instagram and TikTok um, because those are two platforms that have short form content. But for YouTube, I ain't gonna lie. And I feel better if there's any white people on here. I feel like it works a lot better for the white people <laughs> than it does for the black people. I don't know what it is. Um, but I think it has a lot to do with the content more so. It depends on the content you're doing. Because not a lot of content that people do on TikTok translates well to YouTube. So I feel like a lot of people, they'll see like, okay, well, what she's doing on TikTok is not what she's doing on YouTube. Or it's not the longer version, so I don't give a shit. Like, there's a lot of people that do dances on TikTok. If you're not going to do longer form dances on YouTube, why would anybody care? Um, and it's like, well, I, I follow to see you shake your ass on TikTok. Why the hell would I care for you talking on YouTube? You know, so it really depends on what you're doing, to be quite honest with you. And hi, everybody on here. Hi, Brittany. Um, hi, Dre. Yes, I am leaving this up. I think. I, oh, yeah, you did see that I said that. Um, and if you do hate talking, there's a lot of um, options for you, Renee, like a lot. Um, a lot of the people. I love don't follow me on a lot of socials or let alone share my stuff, but I'm so supportive. Be wary of that, right? Be very wary of that type of shit. Because they're going to be the same ones as soon as you blow up. Because this happened to me. As soon as you blow up. Hey, oh my God, you got so big. This is how I knew niggas didn't watch me. This is how I knew niggas didn't watch me. Oh my God. Oh my God, Ugh, you've gotten so big. Uh, you're like at 100,000 subscribers down. I'm like, I'm at 315,000, 43,000 on another and 8,000 at another. You're like, oh, you have three channels now? I'm like, yep. Like, come on now. Like, don't don't try to fake act like you watched me. I had 100K like mad long ago. Like, where the fuck were you at? You know, so 
you have to really this shit will teach you who your real friends are you know it, it, it truly will um <laughs> it, it, it truly will show you um my cousin created at least seven different facebook pages and groups for I'm done. Insert your reason. She would invite everyone to join. I created a page for my business and it was radio silence from her. Again, you gotta understand, right? I, I have this whole policy now. It's a new philosophy that I started in 2022. I treat people how they treat me at this point. I know that they, they do this whole treat people the way you would like to be treated. I've been doing this my whole life and apparently it's not working, right? So I treat people the way they treat me. You treat me like trash. I treat you like trash because I ain't got time. Okay, I'm not about to be sitting here having high blood pressure for people, and I'm not about to sit here and just get myself mad. You treat me like trash, I treat you like trash. Um, and at this point, I mean, well, in this case, you could invite other people to like the page. I realize that is a thing. Um, and at this point, for you, I wouldn't even be um, following her little pages because nobody has time for that, you know? Do you have a recommendation for editing software? Phil Mora is really good iMovie is really good. I use iMovie for a very long time. I think the only reason I stopped using iMovie is because it doesn't let you layer too much. It lets you layer enough, but it doesn't let you layer too much. And I didn't like their transitions. Um, I do use Final Cut now, but I also have an assistant. She uses Adobe Premiere. Um, yeah, so she's my assistant and my editor. So she uses Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere is garbage to me, but there's people that swear by that shit. The only thing with Adobe Premiere that I like is that I don't like anything about it, to be honest. But it has good things. The effects. There you go. The effects on there are really great. Um, but it's extremely expensive because you have to pay every month to use it. Um, and I don't like the fact that it crashes every two seconds. I don't know why anyone would want to use something that crashes every two seconds. But hey, I'm a Final Cut girl. That's what I use in college. That's what I learned to use. So Final Cut all day. And plus, you could get it on discount on um apple for like 200 dollars. if you just get the student bundle you get like logic and all these other things that no one cares to use but you'll get other shit for free right um but realistically if you're a new youtuber iMovie and window movie maker i don't care what he says i swear by windows movie maker but you can't layer um you could it's very linear so if you want to put text on the screen um i think you could put text on the screen but you can't like put like so if you're doing reaction videos, that's not going to be good for you, right? Like you can't put like photo or video over the picture or over your video, if that makes sense. So if you're just doing like straight talking, straight video, it's not bad. But if you're going to be doing like more intense shit and you need like more layers in your video, Window Movie Maker is not going to work for you. So Full More is really good. DaVinci Resolve is really good. Um, and I believe they're pretty cheap, but I also think they do have that whole situation where you have to like pay every month. I don't like that shit. I like to own my shit outright. Um, that's why I like Final Cut. You pay the $200, you take the hit and you're done. Okay. Like that, that's just me. Um, so is iMovie. Take the cut and you're done. But that's also Mac. Um, there was another thing I used to use. I can't remember what it was. And it's on Windows. I can't remember what it was. Oh my God. Oh, Sony Vegas. Sony Vegas is also really good, but extremely complicated to use. I'm not even going to stunt. Um, but there, there's other editors out there that I've heard of recently that have come on the market that are a lot easier to use these days that are very inexpensive as well. And no problem. Wow. How do you say your name? Cass. Okay. Ki Asanjane. Asanjane. I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, I'm so sorry. Please correct me on how to say your name. Um, okay. Let's see. You said you use Power Director 365. I never heard of that one. That sounds really good. Power Director. I'm gonna I'm definitely look into that. All right, let's keep going. I'm making good timing. Oh my god. Shout out to the ADHD not, not playing with me. All right, so let's talk about audience versus views, guys, because a lot of people do not know the difference, right? Um, so audience is people that care about you right they come back they watch your shit time and time again and they engage with your content all the time okay your views they're just counting when someone clicks and they stay honestly i think it's 30 seconds but we're just gonna say a minute to be safe and they may never come back or ever engage believe it or not believe it because i i ain't gonna stop i just found this shit in my analytics so there is a part in your analytics on youtube that tells you 
the people that actually come back to your channel, especially the people that are subscribed that come back to your channel time and time again, you will see it in your analytics. It's in your audience analytics. And it'll tell you this person subscribed, this person came back, this person has been subscribed. If you do check in your comments, it'll be like this person subscribed and they've been subscribed for one year, two years, two months, one week. And then there's also another part that says this person subscribed and they've been here for this much amount of time. Very interesting shit. And this shit is very, very important because it tells you like these people care about you or these people don't give a fuck about you. This is why now that shit helps me because sometimes when somebody will write certain things now, it, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I don't give a fuck about you because you ain't ever been subscribed. <laughs> like, it's like, ah, this person doesn't care. Understand. You can have a million views and only have 100 subscribers. I ain't gonna say that's a bad thing, but it ain't a great thing. If you have a million views and 100 subscribers, that means more than likely something that you made was just here for a short time, not a long time. Okay, that means that whatever it is that you made was not something that resonated with the audience that you wanted to bring in. Or it was something that you were making that was a disconnect with what it is that you wanted to bring into your channel. In other words, we all know people like this. And this is a problem. Um, and I feel like a lot of people do it. They do this whole situation where, oh my God, I'm doing makeup content. The makeup is not doing well. Oh shit. This girl, she just died. Hmm. Getting traction. I have a lot to say about this. Let me just talk about this right now. Let me do some quick commentary. Do the commentary video. Say commentary video hits a hundred thousand views. Meanwhile, all their makeup videos is maybe at 500 views. Huge difference, right? You would think all your makeup videos that have 500 views and then that one commentary video has 100,000 views, you would probably get at least 1,000 subscribers from it. Nah. The issue here is those people are not your audience. That's just views. Because your audience is probably the 500 views that you've been getting on the makeup. Your audience is the people that came and subscribed for the makeup. They're like, um, bitch, I wanna know how to do a cut crease. I wanna know how to do a smoky eye, which I mean, at this point, I think everybody, I'm not gonna say everybody, cause bitch, I, I still can't do a cut crease. I don't give a fuck as long as I make up, right? But you know what I mean? These people are coming to you for makeup. They're not coming to you for all this goofy shit, okay? They don't care about commentary. Even though, yes, a girl lost her life. They're like, um, I don't come to you for that. I come to you to see you beat your face. So even though you got those views, those views did not translate. You may have got maybe one, two, 50, maybe a hundred subscribers if you're lucky, but those people are not going to translate to an audience because it's drastic. What happens here is people see, hmm, well, she made one commentary video on some girl that got murdered, but that doesn't mean that's what she does. All she does is makeup, and I don't give a fuck about makeup. All right, this was just some good commentary, goodbye. So either the person's going to see, if they click on that video, okay, this person either doesn't care for this and they did this reviews, or this person doesn't make this content and this was a one-hit wonder and I don't care. That's what that translates to. So either you can make that video and say, hey, guys, I plan on doing more of this content, or you can fuse two of those things together this is why you have a lot of people now that do the whole mystery and makeup which i think is disrespectful but hey who am i you have the whole mystery and makeup or commentary and makeup or you have the whole people that do mukbangs and um mukbangs and commentary or mukbangs and mystery this is why you have that fuse because there's a lot of people that were doing completely different things but they want to talk about different things on top of that they want to do makeup, but they want to infuse their interest. So you could mix it, or you could just choose a whole different lane altogether. Nonetheless, if you deviate too much away from whatever it is that you're doing, you're going to have the whole issue of views versus your audience. So focus on having an audience and not just views. And okay, that's how you say your name. Kiashjane. Wow, okay. I have to practice that. Kiashjane. Kiashjane. I hope I said that right. Thank you for correcting me. I hope I said that right. All right, so media 
hustles, principles for YouTube success. So here are the principles, all right? So passion, purpose, personal, right? This is how I decide if I want to do some shit or not for everything in life. So what are you passionate about? What is your purpose? Um, and of course, what is your personal connection to it? This is how you figure out what you want to do with YouTube and honestly what you want to do with your life point big period. What is your passion? Is it hair? Is it makeup? Is it cooking? Is it video games? Shit, is it sex? What is it? What are you passionate about? What is that purpose with that passion? Do you want to share it with people? Do you want to inspire people with it? Or is it just something that you like to do? And most importantly, what is your personal connection to it? For example, there's a lot of people that are insanely passionate about investing, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean they want to share it with people. They just want to invest because they want to make money, point blank, period. There's a lot of people that are very, very passionate about fashion. They just like to dress nice. I'm one of those people. I really love to dress nice. I don't necessarily give a fuck um, in terms of like sharing it with people. Now I think I do, but not really. Like that was something I started YouTube thinking I wanted to do it. But then when I started doing it, I was like, I don't care that much. I just like to look cute. Just want to take some pictures, share some cheap shit with some people. That's it. Do I actually sit there and think I want to do hauls every day, all day? No. I think I want to do some hauls sometimes, put some pieces together, show people how to do some things once in a blue. But is that something I want to be my niche? Nope. Don't care to be a lifestyle person, you know? So there's some things that you may think you have an interest in, but do you want that to be your whole life? Like, is that something that makes you excited? Is that something that you're passionate about? You may actually pick up the camera, start doing some shit, and you're like, okay, I, I thought I thought cooking was my passion. Well, okay, I think I'm just passionate about cooking for my family. Okay, I thought I was passionate about real estate and selling these houses, but I think I only care about selling houses when I'm making money. I don't care about teaching other people how to sell these goddamn houses. <laughs> you know, like sometimes you just may be passionate, but you're not that passionate enough to teach other people or necessarily talk about it to other people. And of course, what is your personal connection to it, right? So the way this works and I guess YouTube land would be, all right, I'm passionate, well, I'm just going to use these up, right? So I'm passionate about fitness because I used to be 250 pounds and I lost 100 pounds from doing the paleo diet. And now my purpose is to help people do the same because personally, I was extremely unhealthy and unfit. And essentially, I don't want to ever feel that way ever again. You see what I just did there? That is my passion, my purpose, and my personal. And there is way many channels and people that feel that way. Whether it's the paleo, the keto, shit, regular, just diet. There's people out there that have that type of mission statement. If you can't describe your channel like that within one to two sentences, you're doing something wrong. You have to be able to tell people what you do in YouTube in two seconds. You can't be like, oh, I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, because you know what you're doing? You're, you're, you're... First rule of marketing, if you're appealing to everybody, you're appealing to nobody. A lot of people have this whole consensus of, oh, well, I have a little bit of everything for everyone because I want everyone to feel comfortable on my channel. If I... You're going to grow faster if you have one focus, okay, or two focuses or three focuses that all go with each other. So example, if you're going to be a chef, right, if you're going to do cooking shit, things that go together are, of course, if you're going to cook, dieting, cooking, recipes, um, you can even do like food unboxings, right? Those all go together. Even though they're not 100% the same thing, they all go together. You're going to do real estate, real estate, investing, financial advice. You can even do reactions to people's poor financial advice. Graham Stephan is a good example of that. You're going to do fashion, dupes, fashion hauls, um, styling videos, things like that. Anything in there, even lifestyle videos can still go into the realm of fashion. If you're going to do hair videos, if you know how to do hair, you can do styling videos of you doing people's hair. You could do break reviews. You can literally do um, 
shit, hair horror stories, honestly. Like anything that you can think of that has to do with that can go under that. But if you're doing like literally real estate and then the next day you're going to be doing a fitness video that does not go. If you're going to be doing video games and then the next day you're doing a story time about your baby father, that doesn't go. But you can mess certain things. You could do a video gameplay and talk about a story time with your baby father. People do those, like gameplays and in story times. You know, like if you're going to merge things, you have to find a way for it to merge and make sense. But you also have to be cognizant of your audience. Do people who watch video games watch story times? Personally, I, I think I've seen it. I mean, I've seen Reddit story times, so maybe it'll work. But you have to figure it out and see. Understand that if you want to get an audience, you have to do the shit that people are already doing. So you might struggle a little bit while you're doing that. Who knows? I haven't seen it yet. So if somebody does that, I would love to watch it because that'd be very, very interesting. So next principle of success would be confidence, consistency, and competition, right? Are you confident enough to talk about this? Child. Another mistake I've made. Um, I be thinking, oh yeah, I can do this, bitch. I, I get dressed in the dark, bitch. I could put in together any outfit. I dress people in my sleep. And then I start doing it and I'm like, oh nah, this is yeah. <laughs> um, this is not that fun, you know. Are you confident? Are you confident enough to dress people? Are you confident enough to dance in front of the camera? Are you confident enough to play video games and tell people cheat codes and hack people and teach people how to hack? Or are you confident enough to showcase your food and give people recipes? Recipes. Recipes. Are you confident enough to tell your stories on camera and tell people how you fucked up or fucked people over? Will you be consistent? Is this something you could get on camera and do and talk about every week? Because YouTube is a lot. Like I said, two videos minimum. And honestly, two videos may not even be enough. People on YouTube are entitled. Entitled. Oh my God, where are you? What are you doing? Oh my God, where's your videos? You haven't posted it in a lot. Entitled. Who does hell entitled like that? Will you be able, first of all, if you're going to do story times, because this is something a lot of story time, every, not even a lot, every story time person, every, 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 every story time person gets this issue. Start telling story time, they run out. What are you going to do? Are you start, Are you going to start doing subscriber story times? Are you going to start bringing people on to tell their story times? Are you going to throw yourself into bad situations to have more stories? Are you going to drag out the stories? Are you going to make the stories into part one, part two, part three, part eight? What are you going to do? Because you can only tell but so many goddamn stories. How consistent can you be? Let's think about the natural hair people. Where they at though? How many times we gonna do big chops? How many times we gonna do leave-ins and, and, and wash and goes? How many times we gonna do that shit? How many times can we see you wash your hair? How many times can we see you relax your hair? Let's think about it. Where they at though? They gone because you run out of content. You have to really think about it. There's certain things you could do forever and you also have to think about how much evergreen content can you, can you do. Evergreen content is content that people can watch for years to come. So evergreen content is story times. Because story times you can watch literally today as well as 10 years from now. Like if I do a story time, like my story times right here on my channel about my sister, my parents, whatever. You can watch that 10 years from now. It's still relevant. I said what the fuck I said, right? But it's not like something that's going to expire. Same thing as um, people that do story times about just anything with their life. Like, you can watch those now. It's still funny. It's still sad. It's still whatever. The, the emotions still hit. But when you make commentary videos, right, you got to keep going. You made a commentary video last week about what was in the news last week? Oh, I forgot. Commentary videos, news videos, things like that expire. What happened last week ain't relevant this week. What happened last month ain't relevant this month. You got to continuously do that shit. You have to have the energy, the time, the drive. So those are things you have to keep in mind. Am I always going to be able to be on goal if I'm going to do these commentary videos? Am I going to be glued to my phone? Because you got to be on Twitter all the time. 
if you're gonna do these commentary videos. Oh shit, Beyonce just dropped a new lemonade album. Oh my god, I gotta do it. Oh my god, blah blah blah, just had her baby. Oh my god, blah blah blah, just be um what you call it? Everybody uh blah 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 just left blah blah blah. Someone just cheated on blah blah blah. Someone just did it Instagram down right now. We got what are you going to do? That gets very tiring. You gotta operate like a robot. And nobody gives a fuck. You don't get no grace when you do commentary, drama, gossip, news. Especially when you're smaller. When you're smaller, you really got to be on it. When you get bigger, you get a lot more grace. Because then people just care about your opinion. And it's like you could be a late, as late as you want. And you could just like pick and choose what topics you want to like talk about. But when you're smaller, then you're competing with people. Then you're competing with people. Because you have to be one of the first people to get it out. That's where you're going to get your views. That's where you create your binge chain. And that's when people are like, oh my God, what is she going to do next? What is he going to do next? Like, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? So you have to be like on it. And of course, competition. I did say you're not competing with people. Because you're not. But at the same time, you got to see what they're doing. What they thumbnails look like, what they titles look like, what they views look like, what they subscribers look like, what the subscribers say. You got to look. You got to look. Because what's going to happen is their culture may become your culture. I share a lot of the same subscribers as a lot of people that make similar videos to me. And it's very fucking annoying, actually. But it is what it is. <laughs> you know, so you have to kind of pay attention to that type of stuff. Not to see what they're doing so you can do exactly the same thing. But if you're smart, you might do that, especially if you're smaller, because you will more than likely grow off of it and you will piggyback off of their videos and grow off of the video that they do because suggestive content. But because, I mean, yeah, suggestive content, let's be real. Especially, you know, but always check to see what everybody else is doing. Yeah, you, you got to see it. Not to compete with them necessarily, but just to see exactly where you're at, right? Because if you see other people are doing what you're doing and yours isn't doing well, see what they're doing to see if, how you can improve, okay? But don't start feeling bad. Like, oh my God, they have a million views and I have 10. Don't, don't do that because you're going to self-sabotage. All right. Plan, research, execute, okay? Again, plan. Research all video ideas and niche changes. Now, this is the this is another problem and mistake I see everybody do. They do not research their video ideas. They just, oh, I want to make a video about, I don't know, design trend in 2023. And they just go based off their opinion. Black and white is in. Color block walls are in. Rugs on your bedside are in. Didn't look at nobody else's videos. Didn't go look at no articles. No. Even if you're unsure, post the video. Can't tell you how many fucking times. It happens to me to this day, and it makes me very upset. Um, And I guess that's just social media for you. So many times I don't like a video, whether it's my hair sticking up. Um, I don't like a video, whether it's a dance reel, whether it's me talking. It's a YouTube video. I don't like the video. I'm like, whatever. I don't care. I spent my time on it. My editor posted it, whatever. And that video does well. It happens every freaking single time. Never fucking fails. Always post a video if you don't like it. It's always a video where you look rusty, crusty, dusty, and it does well. So always post a video. Next one is tools to help you grow on YouTube. These right here, go download them. They're all free. They're RP versions, except for Google AdWords and Google Trends. Those are 100. Well, these three are all, um, these last three are all free. But vidIQ and TubeBuddy are free as well, but they have paid versions. So these, I'm very sure everybody uses Google Chrome because why would you not be using Google Chrome? vidIQ and TubeBuddy go into your, um, what's the thing called right now? They go into your your thing, your your toolbar, and um, they essentially, like, when you go into YouTube, it, it shows you all the tea. Okay, you can see how many subscribers people have, their trends, and all of that shit. It's really cute. So, um, yeah, make sure. Go look it up right now. Google AdWords um, basically will show you the, the hot trending words that you should be using in your tag. So, um, rapid tags for your videos. So, if you're not using tags in your videos, especially as a smaller YouTuber, you should always use your tags. 
Um, I don't know why a lot of YouTubers tend to ignore that. As you as you get bigger, it's not really that important. It's not. Um, but when you're smaller, it's extremely important. And of course, Google Trends helps you find really good video ideas within your niche. That's one a lot of people don't know about, but definitely write it, write it, write it, write it. So next case, we have why most people fail on YouTube, right? Failure to plan, lack of consistency in time, lack of motivation, lack of confidence, lack of support, lack of knowledge, unrelatable topics, um, discussed on channel, bad quality content, not doing any research, being disingenuous, being dishonest, overselling, bad attitude, ungratefulness, hidden past and secrets, right? There's a lot here. And I'm very sure I'm missing some, but I think these are like the top reasons why people fail. Um, yeah, it, I think these are very self-explanatory. Um, but I think the only one I want to expand on would be overselling. There's a lot of people that get on YouTube and they're like, oh, I'm going to start a YouTube channel so I can sell my business. When you get on YouTube and don't nobody know you and you you sitting there talking about something, yeah, I'm going to sell my pantyhose or I'm going to sell my wigs or I'm going to sell whatever. That That's extremely disingenuous and that's annoying and it's sneaky. Nobody knows you and nobody cares about your crusty, rusty, dusty ass wigs or your fucking t-shirts. Um, it's annoying. So if you're going to get on YouTube just for that, remind yourself that it's going to be a while. I remember I had somebody that, that booked a consultation with me. And they were convincing me. They were trying to convince me. I, I felt like I was having a damn conversation. But they, they were like, yeah, so why can't I get on YouTube to sell my thing again? I said, if you want to do that, just make a business account. Like, why don't you make a business YouTube? Because that's a thing. Like, there's a business YouTube, and then there's being an influencer. But basically, they want to be an influencer to sell their stuff. And I was like, <laughs> I, it was hard. If you're going to do that, that's a whole nother lane. That's a whole nother lane. It's a whole nother thing. And this is not for you. This, this is a whole nother thing. Being an influencer is completely different um, than getting on YouTube or getting on social media to be a business account, okay? So just letting you guys know that right now. So my personal story, sheesh, we're almost an hour in and I thought I would have got here after 30 minutes, but I guess not. So my personal story, right? So la, 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 it's a lot. All right, so how I got some 100K, right? So... I did the whole quantity, not quality. I'm not going to lie. Um, but YouTube was a little bit different, I guess, when I started YouTube. Wow, I look so different. But yeah, um, YouTube was a little bit different. Um, so I went from 6K to 100K. So I will say that when I started YouTube, so I started this channel. Well, this, not, this is my newest channel, right? This is my personal channel. Well, my main channel, I started back in high school, very, very long time ago. Um, I started it with a group of people. And they were lazy as hell. It was, it was a group channel. I want to do comedy. Um, yeah, it didn't work. Because <laughs> they was lazy as hell. I, I don't think that, I don't know. I'm going to go see if that video is on the, the channel still. But it was supposed to be like a comedy skit situation. It didn't work out because they were lazy. I fired them. And I basically started doing shit by myself for a little bit. I'll post videos here and there. But I was a little embarrassed. I don't want people to make fun of me or whatever. So. Yeah, I started out wanting to do like music reviews and fashion stuff because like I was always dressed up in things. So I was like, you know what? I'd be great doing like fashion. But then every single time I posted a video, I would get copyright claims. I was like, damn, how can I do this? Like, you know, how can I post YouTube videos, but like have music in it that I like? So I, I kind of like started talking to a lot of people, um, you know, that would make music in my area. And I was like, hey, can I use your music? Can I use your music? And I started to realize surely, but slowly, but surely that underground and unsigned artists were like really, really disrespectful and just ungrateful pieces of shit. So I didn't want to work with them anymore, <laughs> you know, because then eventually they started asking for favors like, oh, put me on your YouTube, review my music, da, 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 da. And I was like, no, don't want to do that. Um, and then the fashion videos became very difficult. Like, so first of all, Again, I love to get dressed. I'm I'm just a, I wear heels every day. I'm very like I'm always dressed, right? So I 
didn't have the means to do the fashion videos. First of all, like my camera wasn't on point. My background wasn't on point. It was so difficult to do like anything. Okay, like I still have the old fashion videos. I just, they didn't look good to me. I think I still have them up, right? I don't care. Cause started from the bottom now here. Uh, it was just so much work. And as easy as it looks to do a haul video, you think you're just trying on clothes. I still to this day do not like trying on clothes. I would rather go to a store, buy clothes that don't fit than to try on the clothes in the store if it hasn't fitting me. Like, I just don't like trying on clothes. I think it's so much freaking work and it's just cumbersome. So I was like, yeah, this is like a lot of work. Like, what can I do? And at the time, I was, like, really big on Twitter. Like, I had a really big Twitter account, which sadly got hacked. Very depressed about it. Um, and, and I would, like, do all these posts on, on Facebook, which I had a really big Facebook account. But, again, got hacked. Sad about it. And people would be like, hey, yo, like, you, you make really good, like, posts. You need to make videos about this stuff. And I'm like, no. Um, no. Because I would make controversial ad posts. Like, I was saying all types of shit, and I was like, yeah, why would anybody care about this shit? Like, it, it wasn't even that I was afraid to get canceled, because they cancel where, like, I said what I said. But it was just like, I'm not, I don't think anyone would care about this stuff. So I was just ignoring, 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 right? So I was just throwing shit at the wall, y'all. I would make story times. I would do marshmallow uh, challenge. You know that shit, the chubby money. You know when you put all the marshmallows in your mouth? It's still on YouTube, too. It's still on my main channel. I if y'all scroll, go all the way. Y'all see all my old videos. I would do the, I think I did the saltine cracker challenge. I did so many videos back in the day. Throwing shit at the wall. I did, I even did a story time on how I failed my driver's test three times or two times. I passed it the third time. Listen, I'm SpongeBob. Okay, I thought I was never gonna get a license. I've done so many just random things because I did not plan. I was just doing things for fun, right? Um, so <laughs> I got to college. Um, and it got to a point where eventually I decided, okay, I'm going to study journalism because I was like, yo, I don't want to go to school for singing and dancing. This is the thing. A lot of people don't know this, but I, I, I sing and I dance. I, I just started posting my dance videos on, on Instagram. Maybe I'll start singing soon, but I am releasing a song in January, by the way. It's going to be a Haitian song. But anyway. I, I never had the confidence to sing anymore. Like, I've been singing my whole life, but I stopped singing not too long ago, actually. Like, maybe three, a little bit before the pandemic. Um, I stopped singing. I told you guys this in my um, sister story time. I stopped singing because my sister said something very disrespectful to me as a child, and I kind of, like, never cared to do it professionally. But I kept singing in churches. I kept singing national anthems. I, I was invited to sing national anthems for numerous flag raisings and things like that. So like I kept singing and people asked me to sing because I like to perform. Funny enough, I'm like I'm the opposite of every artist, right? I prefer to sing live, but I do not like studio sessions. I hate studio sessions. Like I, I love it. I don't like it. I prefer to do everything live. I prefer to dance live. I prefer to sing live. Well, put me in a studio, put me by myself somewhere. I don't like doing it. Um, so essentially, it, it was one of those things where it was like, I was like, you know what? I, I'm not gonna do this professionally because like why would I go to school to perform? And now that I think about it, I, I kind of regret it. Like, as I've, as I've gotten older, I was like, I should have probably went to school to perform because, like, I don't hate journalism. I don't hate social media because I felt like that was, like, my second love. Um, I started getting older, and I was like, yo, social media is pretty cool. Because, like, I spent all my time in the computer um, from, I guess, middle school on. Like, I loved MySpace. I was doing all the JavaScript. Like, I was doing everybody's pages, doing the music in the background. Like, I would do my best friend's page every week. I would do my page every week. Like, I loved it. I was like, yo, what is this? Like, and, you know, I, I heard it was coding. And I was like, ooh, I don't know if I want to do the coding thing. And then, you know, Facebook came. And then I fell over Facebook. And I kind of found a code. So, like, from Facebook to high school to going into college, I was like, yo, what is this shit? Like, what can I do that's kind of similar? That's so when I found out about journalism. So, I was like, you know what? Maybe performing is not going to be my thing. Um, and I don't see the point of going to school for performing because, like, why would I do something like that? I just didn't see the point, really. And I think, like, my dreams are kind of shattered. Um, and I was just, like, doing it on a sneak tip, like, as a passion thing. Um, so I was like, you know what? Journalism it is. And as a way to enhance my portfolio and give me an edge against all my competitors in college, I was like, can't nobody do it like me. I'm going to have a YouTube channel. All these hoes, they got their grades and, and whatever. But I'm going to have a YouTube because nobody else got a YouTube. <laughs> Okay, so every single time I go on a job interview, I'm like, yeah, I got YouTube. 
I got YouTube. But my YouTube didn't even blow up until after I graduated, funny enough, right? So all throughout college, maybe 200 subscribers, 500 subscribers. I think I graduated with maybe 1,000. Maybe a thousand. Like I was so small, but I was so happy with my little thousand, y'all. I was doing little skincare routines, Miss Shop Miss A hauls, like just little hauls, chubby buddy challenge. That's why I was doing all of that stuff. I think I did the what was the challenge where somebody threw up? Somebody threw up on my channel. I think I, I fell off the bed doing the jelly bean channel. Like it was just so fun. You know, it was fun for me, right? Um, so when it got to a point where I think I graduated and I probably made it to maybe 6k that's when i made it 6k so i think it was like i had graduated and i had got a nine to five it was beautiful i was making money this is the job that i talked about where basically um i had got fired for some fuck shit um so at this point let's fast forward to like that january so if i graduate 2017 i think it was january 2018 then january 2018 um i'm sitting there and i'm stressed y'all because i'm like how the fuck am i at 6k <laughs> Only 6K. And this is what I was doing YouTube commentary, y'all. I had shifted to YouTube commentary. I was really good friends with Troy's Thailand. We had like this little YouTube group. Um, if you guys know TC93, she makes um, a lot of YouTube shorts now. She's got a million now doing YouTube shorts. But she was so small back then. Like we were all so damn small. Like we used to be in the little YouTube group all fucking like Ubu. Was it Ubu? No. Skype maybe? So like three, it was just crazy. Two, three o'clock in the morning. We had Yada, Kaya 93. What's her name? Kaya something. We had all these people on this little YouTube group. And I was like, how the fuck am I only at 6K? Mind you, 6K is a lot. I ain't gonna stop for this. I truck for that 6K. I used to do YouTube commentary on YouTubers that was just, you know, doing fuck shit. Cause you know, back in the day, YouTube was dramatic. The, the fake YouTube pranks, the YouTube drama with DDG doing all of this. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, yo, fuck this shit. I don't care. I was like, I'm about to quit. If I don't blow up by summer, I'm going to quit. That was basically what I was saying. So basically, I think I had come across a natural hair video, right? And I was like, why the hell do people keep letting black women scam them into these things for their natural hair? When essentially all they have to do is wash their hair and put moisturizer in. And I posted this shit on Instagram. I said, can you guys stop letting people fucking scam y'all, especially when it's your own people? Like, these people are fucking scammers. And people just kept responding to me like, yo, bitch, talk about it. Make a video. Talk about it. Make a video. And I was like, mm, I don't know. It was like, bitch, no, talk about it. Make a video. And I was like, I don't know, bro. It was like, bitch, I swear, talk about it. So I kept piping it up. I was like, yo, these motherfuckers are some scammers. They be telling you about all these products. All these shits is sponsored. They be telling you it's not sponsored. These shits is affiliates. I was just out and them, out and them, out and them, out and them. I was going in. And the niggas was eating it up. And I was like, huh. It was like, yo, when is the video dropping? When is, I need to watch it. And this is people I went to school with. This is people that ain't never comment on my stuff like that. So I was like, okay. I went to work. Mind y'all, still live in my parents' house. I went to work. Started filming. I made maybe like a 20 minute rant. Like, my job looked a hot ass mess. I, I'm so mad how, how much of a mess I was. Give me but I don't give a fuck. The rant was good. It was one of my best rants I ever made in my entire life. Posted that video, went like viral for me for 6K. It went viral for me. And everything just blew up from there. But you know, I had a whole different Instagram at the time too. And I made a whole new, I don't know why I made a new one. But it was a different Instagram that I had at the time. Different Twitter I had at the time. I'm so mad. But anyways, blew up. I went from 6K to 10K to 15K to 20K. And I just harped off of that. From that video, of course, I made a follow-up video because people were upset. Okay. The natural hair girl is mad upset oh my god they were upset that i dragged their little fucking scamming ass enterprise but i didn't give a fuck because you're awesome scammers right funny enough they, they that natural hair community really did die very very close to after my rant 
But I mean, did I kill them? I don't think so. You guys were already dying, right? But like after that, I made a follow up to that, you know? And then after that, I made a succession of different rants and I just kept ranting. Um, I think I made a plastic surgery rant. I made a rant about public assistance. I just harped. And then I went into reactions that also had rants and they were all similar. I created a binge chain. And that's what y'all need to understand. You had to create binge chains. Now, if I would have sat there and just like went back to my regular content of dragging YouTubers, that might have worked, but people probably would have wanted me to see what people would have probably wanted to see me drag specific hair YouTubers. I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not about to tear down specific black women. Y'all know who the fuck I'm talking about. Okay, we know who the fuck is scamming y'all. And more than likely, your favorite natural hair YouTubers is scamming y'all. So I, I ain't got to say no names. It is what it is, right? So I just left that at that and just kept ranting about different things that I didn't like and it helped me. Another avenue I could have did, I could have just became a natural hair YouTuber at that point. I felt like that would have been really great for me. But at the same time, I was like, I'm going to run out of content. And plus, I don't do nothing to my hair. And that was my selling point. I don't do nothing to my hair. I wash my hair. I use conditioner. I use maybe an oil here and there. And I go. To this day, my locks, they're two years strong. Nobody believes me. And I don't put nothing in my hair but castor oil. There's no extensions in my hair. Even my mom, every time she sees me, she's like, are you sure that's all your hair? I'm like, that is my hair. That is my selling point. So if I would have became a natural hair YouTuber, it's like, what the hell am I going to show these people? What am I going to show these people? I remember I did a whole, like, natural hair wash day of, like, a 30-minute one because people didn't believe me. People were like, oh, it takes me two hours, four hours to wash my hair. It's like, for what? Wash your fucking hair and go. It's not that difficult. I think I did like two. It takes me 30 minutes to wash my natural hair. Why does it take you so long, you know? So that was my shit. It was like literally simplicity, rants, reactions. And then I inserted starting doing commentary. And I hammered the fuck out of that shit. And then I implemented my, I'm posting Monday through Friday till I hit 100K. And everybody loved that shit. <laughs> oh, everybody loved that shit. I had a little song posting Monday through Friday till I hit 100K. You know, and to be honest, that was exhausting. Okay, so that's what I did. I did the whole quantity over quality. I will say right now, I don't think that would work in the current space of YouTube, depending on what you're doing. If you're doing reaction videos, it will definitely work. Uh, it will a thousand percent work. Uh, if you're doing rant videos, it's probably not going to work. Um, you have to build a personal connection because even with my rants, I always inserted like personal, whatever reaction videos. I always inserted personal, whatever personal, um, stories, personal, something, you know, Sage was always in my videos here and there. So that always did work. Um, I always built hype before my content and it, it does, does, I'm not gonna lie. It does take up a lot of time to build up the hype, um, to sit there and, and be like, hey guys, um, so tell me why. Da, 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 da. All right, I'm gonna make a video about you. And then post on Instagram and then post on Twitter. And it, it does, it does take work, but it, it it works. I proved that it works. And it still works. If I sit there and I'm like, y'all, so I just watched 90 Day Fiance. Tell me why did this nigga doing this and da 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 da. da. I'm gonna make a video. That video will do significantly better than the other ones. It, it works. It works. It's just too much work, but it does work. Um, and I definitely did do the easily produced content thing. Personally, I don't like it. So, but reactions do work. You have to find something that do that 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 you can produce faster. Um, but that's the thing. Not everybody can be a reaction YouTuber. I happen to have a lot of good faces that people like. I guess, and I always have some shit to say. <laughs> Um, not everybody's good at reactions. I'm sure we all come across boring ass people. Okay. We all come across people and they doing reactions and this is what they're doing. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. And they, they just sitting there. It's not a good reaction. 
I don't give a fuck. People would be mad. I stop the video every two seconds, but that's your business. I link it down below. And if it's not linked, go fucking find it, bitch. I don't care. I got something to say. It's a reaction video. Like, what, like, I, like if it's that short, I'll just put it in the beginning. But realistically, if you want to be somebody that reacts to videos, you better actually have a reaction. You know, my most popular videos, if I'm not, yeah, my most popular videos are reaction videos. You know, so it, it's very, very difficult to be honest to be a good reaction person right either you have, either the videos that you're reacting to has to be extremely interesting extremely popular or you have to have the personality to react to them right um and you have to just stick to, for me i stuck to two types of videos rants or reactions commentary came later um and of course promoting the videos on social media is very important um if you did not know your videos do well depending on how many views you get within the first 48 hours that they're posted point blank period uh if you didn't know now you know the faster you get people to watch the video within 48 hours the better it'll do and the more money you get right so if your video hits a million views like way later you'll get way less money if the video gets a million views like within a week or whatever you'll you know get more money so a million views today is way less than a million views tomorrow so definitely something to keep in mind. So I guess that's my personal story. Let me look at these comments. Oh, ha, 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 ha. thanks, Shorty Q. I miss my little Shein haul. I mean, I don't even think I, I, don't, I only did one Shein haul though. But thanks. Um, I think a lot of creators excel in so many areas, so it's hard to narrow. Yeah, it, it really it, it is hard. But this is the thing, right? Like for me, this is why I have three different channels because I realize I like different things. But now that I realize that I separated my channels, I'm like, I'm very good at different things, but at the same time, I'm not amazing at different things. So now I'm like, okay, yep, I realize what I'm very good at <laughs> and what I'm not so good at. And I realize what I love making content about and what I don't love making content at. So it's like, you gotta, and, and also you have to realize what's important to you. Are you, do you really want to be successful? And, um... How fast do you want to be successful? And also, what is it that's really, like, what What do you want to, like, inter like, how do I explain it? What do you want to put at the forefront? Is it money? Is it subscribers? Is it brand deals? Is it authority in your brand? Like, what is it? Because if you are doing cooking, fashion, lifestyle fitness if you're doing all these things at once it's going to be a lot harder to grow can you do that yeah because there's people that do it but it's going to be harder to grow i did it i i did do it i i had like a million things on one channel but i chose to separate it down the line because it was like it's too fucking much i can't be dragging racist people on one video the next one's a fucking haul and the next one's a reaction and the next one's a story time it was too much i didn't like it i i didn't like it at all i didn't like how inconsistent it was and then for me my biggest thing was brands would lowball me, right? They would be like, oh, you have 100,000 views on this video, but then 10,000 views on this video, but then 1,000 views on this video, so we can't pay you how much you're worth. That's the big issue there. Personally, I'm not about to have these people lowball me. So that's why I separated it. And plus, again, like I said, appealing to everybody is not always a good thing. If you're going to sell your channel to brands and things like that, you want to be able to say, hey, I make this type of content. I get this many amount of views. These are the type of people that watch my channel. They're this whatever age. They're from this place. Oh, my God. They're from this place, and this is what they do. That's what you want to be able to say. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is they're going to sit there and use that excuse of, okay, well, you have 500 views here. You have 10 views there. You have 1,000 views there. It's to be like, oh, well. We can only pay you $100 for this promotion. That's what they're going to do to you. And you do not want that to happen. It, it gets very freaking annoying. Um, and I just want that to prevent that from happening to you guys because it, it sucks that a lot of us are already black. <laughs> and that happens anyway. So, yeah. Um, rants are my favorite videos to watch from people. Are you the first to start ranting videos? Oh, I'm definitely not. People rant all the damn time. Uh, I think people was ranting since the beginning of YouTube, to be honest. 
But for me, I think that was something that I was iconic for. Uh, I think my rant videos, that's what I was known for. And to be honest, it's funny because I don't rant anymore. Oh, shit. I don't rant anymore. <laughs> I don't rant as much as I used to. Damn, that kind of hurt. Um, Yeah, that, that kind of hurt. I don't know. Yeah, I used to be really, really ranty um, back in the day. That was my thing. Like, to this day, I think my rant, these two rants and reactions, those are my most watched videos. Um, now it's like, not? Like, because I just don't do them like that anymore. But I don't have much to rant about. I feel like I ranted about everything. But I haven't ranted about everything. It's just like, I don't know. I don't put priority on those anymore. But I definitely ain't creep. Um, I don't remember anyone before you put that to me. I'm done. I stay under the rocks sometimes. I don't know. I feel like I definitely watch other people's rants. I just can't remember them right now. Um, how do you stick to one niche without being bored? You just do other things in that one niche. And again, that has a lot to do with passion, right? So this is the thing. A niche is not just one type of video or one type of thing, right? So like I had said earlier, right? There's different, there's different genres and different things in one niche. So if you're going to do, okay, lifestyle is a niche, kind of, but very broad niche. Lifestyle videos is kind of everything. If you're doing lifestyle videos, you're doing everything in lifestyle, right? So lifestyle is cooking. It is fashion. It's vlogs. It is story dots. It's everything. So if you're a lifestyle YouTuber, you're doing everything. Okay, you're doing skincare, you're doing makeup, you're doing everything. So if you're a lifestyle YouTuber, that's everything under the damn sun because it's your lifestyle. But you have to be careful because there's a lot of people that just think they're interesting. But if you're a lifestyle YouTuber, this is how you know if you're interesting or not. First of all, what is it about your lifestyle? You have to ask yourself, what is it about your lifestyle that people are going to want to subscribe to? You can't just be like, oh, I'm a pretty black girl or I'm a pretty white girl. I'm a pretty Hispanic girl. I'm a pretty Asian girl. But what do people, what do you do in your life that's interesting? Do you work for Google? Are you a cowgirl? Do you live in a van? Are you a stripper? What about your lifestyle is interesting? So lifestyle is one of those things that you can branch off with. If you do video games, what are you going to do? There's gameplay video game unboxings you could do video game and commentary video game and reddit reviews or my bad reddit readings video games and story times video game type of like collaborations with people video game cheat codes like there's so many things you can do you just have to actually sit down plan watch what other people are doing see what other people are doing get inspiration from it so i'm not saying if you're doing story times just only do story times I'm not saying if you're doing cooking videos, only do cooking videos. Because there's other things you can do. Like, if you are a chef, you can do a million different recipes, first of all. And then you can take that to other places. You can do shop with me videos. You can do different recipes of different things. You can do different types of situations with other people. Go collaborate with different types of chefs. Like, it, it's really easy. But again, that goes to passion. Because if you're not passionate about it, you're going to get bored. Like, I realized that personally, my passion is performing. I like to sing and I like to dance. I can dance all damn day. I hear a song in a supermarket. I don't care what the fuck it is. It could be from the 40s, the 30s. It could be a Spanish song. It could be a Chinese song. I will literally think of choreography for it in 2.5. And I know for a fact I will never get tired of it. So then I realized, yeah, dancing is legit my passion. Same thing with ranting. I don't get tired of ranting if... I'm legit interested in the topic that I'm talking about. But if I don't care, I don't care. <laughs> that's the thing. If you're actually passionate about what you're talking about, you're not going to get bored. So that's the key. You have to find something that you're actually passionate about. Uh, la, 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 la. So thank you for explaining like that. I'm still a newbie trying to figure Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you definitely have to. Th th that passion part is really important. If you're not passionate, it's going to be difficult. You're going to get bored. You're going to get mad. Because there's a lot of things I'm not passionate about, and I thought I wanted to do it. It's happened to me so many times. I'm like, oh, my God. Yo, you... <sighs> fun fact. I thought I wanted to be a DIY YouTuber. Yeah, okay, I know everybody remembers, like, 2013, when everybody was out here doing this fucking... <laughs> ah! 
when everybody was sitting here doing this whole DIY shit and the glittery shit and all them colors, I thought I wanted to do that. And then I sat down and I tried to do a DIY. I think it's still on YouTube. When I tried to do my little grad cap, I threw that shit running trash. It was horrible. Listen, passion. <laughs> don't just do shit to do it. Okay, don't. Okay, just don't just do shit to do it. Just because people have millions of views doing something, don't mean you will have it. Okay, just, just don't. Uh, hey, I love all the tips you're giving. Now I'm sure what I want to do on YouTube. Yes, no problem. Uh, I'm very multi-person is so it can be hard to me sometimes when i'm learning trust me that's me uh that's why again that's why i separated my shit but at the same time i'm starting to realize i'm really not that passionate about all the things i thought i was passionate about <laughs> i ain't gonna say because i'm like yeah i, I don't care <laughs> i don't care about a lot of this shit i just have a, 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 an interest there's a difference no the very yet that I'm going to add a slide for my webinar. Just to let you guys know, I am doing a webinar on Tuesday. Um, maybe I should put the link here. Hopefully, you guys can actually click on it. I'm doing a webinar. It's going to go way more in depth. Um, and it's going to be on passion. Um, well, I said passion. It's going to be on the same shit, but it's way more in depth, way more slides and shit like that. Um, essentially, 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 right? I need y'all to understand the difference between, right? Interest and passion. Interest and passion, not the same thing. I, I, it is not the same thing. That shit was, yeah, that's what I learned this year. And yes, the glittery stuff, loved it, okay? Ooh, child. So it seems that you have to po possibly post a good amount of videos, get a good little following to know what your audience um like to finagle the views. Okay, so... This is another thing that a lot of people don't tell you, but you're going to figure it out. Oh, not even. I'm going to tell you right now. Before you actually get views and before you get an audience, you're probably going to post 100 horrible videos. I'm telling you this right now. I think every YouTube mentor coach is, probably tells you that already. Yeah, you're going to post probably 100 horrible videos. So don't even get hung up on, oh, I look horrible. I sound horrible. I don't sound confident. Yeah, you're not. Um, you're going to go look at my old videos. But then again, I'm probably not a good example because I, I've always known how to speak very well, but my videos don't look great anyway. So you can go, go look at my, my old videos. I don't look the best. I don't sound the best. The titles are bad. Oh, my God, the thumbnails are bad. Some of my thumbnails are still bad because I'm lazy as fuck, right? You're probably going to have to post 100 horrible videos. It is what it is, but you have to get that experience. And it's not even just me. Go look at every favorite YouTuber you have. Go look at the, the, the first 100 videos they did. Horrible. My first 200, 300 videos are probably trash. <laughs> They're all bad. You know? It, it is what it is. They're all bad. You know, it, it is what it is. The webinar link is also in the bio. I said the bio. The description as well. Okay? Uh, it's okay, though, because you're still creating space for those things. Yeah, definitely. Um, Multi-passionate. It's hard. It's... It's do oh so hard at first because you do everything, but it's better to keep at least three major topics. Yeah, keep at least the three major. Um, as long as they're definitely related, then you're fine. Like if you have an interest in, I don't know, finance, real estate, and then like budgeting, those all go. So I mean, that's fine. Um, I was told that what the I was told that the audience seeing the change helps. So, oh, absolutely. People love a redemption story. People love the underdog. People love, oh my God, she was at 10 subscribers. Now she's at 10,000. Oh, yeah, people love that. Oh, I use that to my advantage. So we are almost done here, I believe, right? So I guess Q&A section. Um, of course, feel free to drop more questions, but there is some mundane ones here. Um, I'm sorry if I'm calling your question mundane if it's here, but I, yeah. <laughs> so um how do you organize your videos this is something a lot of people ask me and i use my planner so i don't have a youtube planner if you didn't know this is a prototype guys it's not this big it's actually probably like maybe a little bit smaller than this it's probably like maybe this size but basically funny enough in college i drafted this shit um and i finally made it a thing like maybe two years ago so it's like media hustle planner it was available on amazon but 
Oh, child, Amazon tried me, so it's not up right now, but it will be up again soon. But if you guys do want to order one personally for me, I can send it to you. I actually just shipped one out to one of my subscribers that emailed me because it's not Amazon anymore, but I do have a planner and I do use it. I'm, I'm dead serious. I have three of these for three of my channels. I'm not joking. And it helps me actually get everything on paper clearly mm -hmm. instead of like sitting there like doing all this goofy shit. And I do have another notebook where I put like my extensive notes. You know, there is plenty of space to write in here, but like some of my videos are a lot longer, especially like mom. Um, now I've been doing Love is Blind reviews. So those are a lot longer. Um, so I do use that planner as well as another like lined notebook. Um, but I'm going to be redoing this planner so that I don't have to use a notebook. So I need to figure out how to do that right now because it's like it's a lot going on. So um, do you believe quality or quantity is most important? Yeah, see, I I think both is most important now. I really did feel back in the day quantity was most important because clearly that's how I grew. But I think quality of your video is important. But at the same time, I'm not even going to lie. There's this girl I watch, right? Her name is, I think, don't quote me on it. I think her name is Mila Tequila. That girl posts. She, she records the videos on her iPhone. I think on a freaking little ass mic, like on this little lavalier, just like talking like this. This girl's at over 100K. But that's because she posts quality content in terms of what she's doing. So this is the thing, right? I think when people hear quality content, they think, oh, I need the best, biggest camera. I need like a canny ADD. Quality content means A, you're posting what other people want to see. B, you're delivering content that people are asking for in terms of like, you know, like quality. Like you're, you're delivering something worthwhile, right? And C, you're basically not posting bullshit out your ass just to post. You're not posting, oh my God, it's Thursday 8 p.m. And I told my subscribers I was going to post Thursday 8 p.m. You're posting something with meaning. Even though she's literally posting on an iPhone, you could tell it's with an iPhone and everything is not the best quality. It's entertaining. Like she'll post things like the history of Britney Spears, um, the history of, I don't know, like she'll do pop culture type of content. And it's something people want to see. And she delivers every single time. Her videos are long as shit. She got the clips going. She got everything. Editing's on point. But she's just sitting there. On the iPhone. In her bedroom. With the most basic setup. And it's like bravo. And she doesn't even post that often. And she's at over 100k. You know? So I do think that if you change your definition of what quality is in your head... Both is weakly important. Um, yeah, and definitely, you definitely should post more. But if you do focus on the quality, you can grow a lot faster. Because I've seen people literally have less than 100 videos on their channel and hit over 100K. So it really does depend. Um, how do you stay consistent posting five times a week? So uh, I have an assistant. Um, and I also keep a very strict calendar. I am going to be posting a video on this channel about how to stay consistent when you're busy as hell and when you're unorganized and when you have, when you have mental illnesses because I do have like bipolar, ADHD and shit like that. Um, I do calendar block. So my days are blocked out. It's like I, I technically should be asleep right now. So I, I literally have my days block out, like wake up, wake up this time, eat this time, shower this time, go to the gym this time. I don't 100% follow it, but I do know what I'm supposed to be doing each day. And then I do have a to-do list. Um, so yeah, every everything has this day, like choreograph this day, whatever this day, write notes this day. Like I, I do have a thing. So yeah, I, I'm very do this, do this, do that. Again, I don't always follow it. Because I don't like telling myself what to do. I don't like anyone telling me what to do. Again, even if it's myself, but I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And even if I don't do things in a specific order, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And shit gets done regardless. Um, how do you keep up with having three channels? So the reason I separated my channels is because, again, it was too much shit going on. I didn't like having all of this shit going on on so many channels. It was too unorganized. And I like when sponsors come to me, I'd be like, listen... If you want to pay me this much, it's going to have to go on this channel. If you're going to pay me that much, it's going to go on that channel. If you want things going on all three channels, you're going to have to pay me this much. 
da 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 da. And plus, I like the fact that if I want to post a specific type of video, it could just go on a specific channel instead of me making my subscribers choose whatever it is to watch that thing. You know what I mean? Like, I want my subscribers to be like, oh, Ivana's going to post a rant. I know where it's going to be. Ivana's going to post a haul. I know where it's going to be. Ivana's going to post anything about Haitian content. I know where it's going to be. And I feel like all my content was ridiculously vastly different. Um, I was making my Haitian content legitimately um, every month of May, like literally the whole month of May, I would just do Haitian content. And it was killing my analytics. It was killing my engagement. And I was like, first of all, I don't like confining myself to just making Haitian content once a year, one month. Like, I think that's dumb. And I love my Haitian culture. I love talking about Haiti. I love talking about Haitian things. And I expanded it to talk about Zodiac signs. Oh shit, I think I'm doing for another one. But anyways, I spent all about zodiac signs, spooky stuff, scary things, ghouls, religion, politics, and things like that. So I was like, you know what? I like that type of things. And that channel has its own fan base, its own shit. Like it has a mind of its own. I like that. So I separated that. That was that, that was the first step. The third channel came with literally YouTube fucking with my main channel. And I was like, you know what? I don't think my personal content should be affected. So I just moved everything there slowly but surely, you know, so that's how that came about, I feel like everything was just vastly different, Dragon Races today, talking about Haitian music tomorrow, and then I'm doing a vlog, I didn't like that, um, so I like the fact that depending on my mood, depending on what content I feel like making, I could just throw it on either one of those channels, so to be quite honest, um, I think it works out because I don't, necessarily have to be like oh i gotta post for each channel every single week i just create and then it goes on whatever respective channel so that works um what equipment do you use i'm very basic i have a ring light and i create the canon i create with my canon m50 i'm, I'm mad i'm looking for it i'm using it uh, uh, i use the stock lens right now because i broke my regular lens i forgot the lens i was using the canon i was using the efm some shit, but I'm using a stock lens and I hate the quality of it, but hey, it's better than nothing. Um, does equipment matter? No, it doesn't, but do not film on your webcam. I'll tell you that much. Do not film on the webcam. Do not film on the webcam again. Do not film on the webcam. It's one of the worst things you can do. Um, do you and should you pay for ads? No, never paid for an ad in my life. Waste of time. Just don't pay for ads. You don't need to. I've, I've known YouTubers who did it, and it did absolutely nothing for them. Struggled for days. Struggled after the ads. Probably struggled worse after the ads. Do not pay for ads, okay? Uh, should you pay for shout-outs and promo? Oh, sorry. Little, little uh, typo here. From companies or influencers? No. Um, This is the thing. A lot of people think, oh, this person has a million subscribers. If they shout me out, maybe I should get, I could get at least 1,000. No. This is the thing, right? Um, a lot of people even ask me, oh, how much can I pay you to shout out my channel? I will never do that. I don't know why people think that's a thing that like people actually care to do. When you shout out, when a subscriber, when a YouTuber shouts your channel out, like no one's going to follow you. Like no one cares to do it. I don't know why it doesn't work, but I just know it doesn't work. Okay. I've tried to do it even for my friends. I've tried to, like, it just doesn't work. I've seen other people do it. It just doesn't work. I've had like other colleagues or whatever, like try to like do the whole pay promo. It just doesn't work. Um, my synopsis would be that if the person's not your friend, um, they don't care. Like if it was like literally like, like I, I feel like like clearly if it's like my cousin or my best friend and they're sitting in a video with me and they're like, and I'm like, Hey guys, you know, my cousin just started her channel. Go follow her. Maybe y'all care. But even at that, it's like a lot of y'all don't, you know? So it's like uh, most of the time, the whole promo thing, doesn't work it's better to grow your shit organically and even if for whatever reason those people follow they're probably gonna see you on their 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 um subscriber page like what the fuck is this why don't i follow this hoe and just, just you know so just just don't do it um uh, do you think there is room for everyone to grow on youtube still absolutely people forget you could be subscribed to multiple people at the same time i hate when people be like oh there's not enough room for everybody it, it's too late to grow on youtube that's kind of dumb. Like people subscribe to multiple people. And what do you why do you think most people fail? I kind of went over that. But for, for me, I think the the top reason most people fail on YouTube 
would have to be lack of consistency. I think that's the top reason. I feel like most people that book consultations with me, the biggest reason they fail is, oh, I don't have the time. Oh, I, I just, I'll I, I be busy. Oh, my, my kids this, my work this, my wife that, my did that, that. And it's like, if you're not even consistent, why are you booking a consultation? Because to be honest with you, I can't help you be consistent. Like, that's you. Like, I can't, like, I don't know what you, like, listen, I'll take your money. But this is the thing. If you can't be consistent, there's nothing I can really do about that, you know? So let me look at the comments now. All right. Uh, create your own website for that because Amazon be stealing people's products. Oh, yeah. Very true. I mean, but no one can see my pages in Amazon. So, and my pages are copyright, so they can't steal shit. Um, but yeah, I've been loving these Love is Blind videos you've been making. Thank you. Are you looking to do more on reality shows? Yes. Um, have you heard of Hap Af wait, what? After Hap what? What is After Happily Ever After? Do you mean 90 Days Happily Ever After? I'm supposed to be starting that, but I, I don't know how I want to do it. I don't know if I want to do it by couples or by episode because it's like practically almost done. So I'm trying to find a way to speed it up and figure it out. But I see like a lot of people who do 90 Days fiance reviews be all over the place and i'm like does it even matter how i do that shit because yeah um i think you helped me refocus my niche thank you yes i hope i really did um i think you create a dance channel uh, i don't want to do that because how the hell this is the thing my ass is not trying to get copyright left and right copyright claims are disgusting but i did hear youtube well when i went to youtube black they said that they're gonna start doing this copyright thing where you can um essentially what's that thing called purchase copyright licenses and use copyright music so maybe if that happens but it's like, I, don't wanna, I don't think i want to do that i don't know people keep been asking me to do it but i don't know anyways i've been using my phone but i don't have storage now advice on what to do in that situation if you have Amazon Prime, back up all your photos to Amazon Photo. I didn't know Amazon Photo was a thing either, but it's a thing where you can back up all your photos to Amazon Photo. But to be quite honest with you, yeah, you will not have to. What was that? Uh -uh. You will have to delete shit. But that's your best bet. You're going to have to delete shit or when you film, as soon as you're done filming, you're going to have to edit and post that shit. Um, this cat. I'm so sorry, guys. You all have to um, literally just film and get it up there as fast as you can. Um, or I would say, if possible, because I don't know if it's possible. If possible, if you can find a phone hard drive, why do I feel like that might be a thing? Maybe, if you can find it. Um, get something similar. Uh, let's see. No, it's a new show called After Happily Ever After. What the hell is that? So people who have their exes choose dates for them. Ex? I would never let my ex find a date for me if I was single. What kind of shit? Oh, no. I don't like BET, though. You said this on BET? I don't like BET for shit. Um, so, mm, mm, maybe I'll check it out one day. But I got to get into 90 Day Fiance first. Maybe one of the 90 Day Fiance is, like, done with. Um, so, Yes. All right, any other questions before we get off here? I'm so shocked that this went as long as it did. I'm, I'm very shocked. Um, but I really hope that I did help you guys. Um, like I said, I'll be doing this webinar on Tuesday. It's going to go way more in depth because, yeah. But a lot of it um, has a lot to do with what I talked about. But it's going to be going more into binge chains, how to create a binge chain step by step, and way more on how to get to that 100K because that 100K is really not that hard to get. Like, I've seen people get 100K. Shit, I, I've seen people get a million in a year. And I just be like, how the fuck? But that's too much work. I, like, it sounds crazy, but I don't know if I would want a million. 500K would be fine for me. Um, but yeah. And yeah, we'll see in this chat, because I, I don't know if I want to watch that. Um, get an external hard drive. But that's the thing. Okay, let me look it up for you right now. Is there external drive for phone? Come on, Amazon. External hard drive. Let's see. Phone external hard drive. Let's look it up. Phone external hard drive. Let's see. 
Oh, 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 okay. Um, I think there is external hard drives for your phone. So you might be able to get one on YouTube. I, I said YouTube. You might be able to get one so you can film for YouTube. You might be able to just connect it. Because it looks like there's flash drives and little hard drive things for your um, phone. Or at least pieces that you can connect to your phone to connect to a hard drive. But to be honest, um, I think we all have issues where a lot of us just like to we can keep shit on our damn phone. Because I be having that problem too. I even go a lot of y'all. I have this issue where I sit there and I have all of this crap on my phone that clearly like i need to delete like i have like what almost three thousand files and i'm like oh my god every day i tell myself i'm gonna delete some stuff and i need to do it and i get more stuff right so definitely do that just start deleting stuff video file oh yeah and make sure you're not um you no know i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do that i'll make that a webinar how to edit that's an edit how to shoot videos on your phone because that's another thing. A lot of people do not know how to properly shoot videos on their phone to make it actually look like you're not shooting videos on your phone. Um, there's settings on there that make it look better. Um, of course, turn on 4K, put it, it depends on how you want the video to look, but I, I prefer the 60 frames per second. Some people prefer the 30, but 60 frames per second make the video look more cinematic. I prefer shooting in front of a window, but of course, a ring light, if you don't have good lighting, good lighting is everything. If you're sitting there, and you're doing this in like caca ass lighting, it's gonna look horrible. It's gonna look just as bad as a webcam. Um, so daylight is the best time. Daylight is better than a ring light. I'm filming with a ring light right now. But without the ring light, this camera would look really, really bad. A lot of people think, oh, I have a camera, my video is gonna look good. No. If you don't know how to use the camera, it doesn't matter. If you don't have good lighting, it doesn't matter. What really matters is the lighting and knowing how to use your camera. Right. Um, ISO. Do you have ISO on the camera? No, I don't think I have ISO, but I know you could. You, uh, the F stop is really important. Let me go on my camera right now. So on an iPhone, I have Android, so I have to get. I can't do that. But I was about to say I probably have to teach you guys how to um, shoot video on there, but I don't know. My phone, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's too much. So let me show you guys. So this is the iPhone right here. Yeah, iPhone. Right. So. This whole 4K 24, no. Quality is going to be trash, right? So the little corner situation, HD 30 is fine, but I prefer HD 60. It just looks a lot better, especially if you're doing a dance video. HD 60, no matter what. HD 60 will make it look cinematic, but HD 30 is fine, especially if you're doing this, like a sit-down video, but yeah, HD 30 is fine or 4K 30, but 4K is going to take up a lot more storage, like a fuck ton more storage. If you're updating, I said updating, if you're uploading it to a computer though, keep in mind, if you're uploading to a computer, especially if you have a newer iPhone, I don't know what the fuck is going on, but you, you will have to color correct the video. Color correcting is a whole nother video for a whole nother time and a whole nother webinar. I don't know why. It's a whole thing where like now if you put it onto the laptop, it's like it's making you color correct. Like it's not going to look the same. So if you're, if you're doing it on your phone and you're editing on your phone, it's not that big of a deal. But definitely HD 30 or HD 60, make sure it's not on 24 because it's going to make it look choppy. It's going to make it look crazy. If you are going to import it somewhere, make sure the settings are exactly the same because what happens is as soon as you put it on the computer or put it into any editing software and it's not exactly the same, it's going to lower the quality of the video. So you want to make sure everything is like lined up when you put it in the computer this has to do with camera too if you're shooting your video with you know 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second with 4k or hd or whatever make sure that when you import your project it's the same thing but again this is all for one other thing this is why i always tell people don't get the goddamn camera because you you gotta know all this type of stuff the f-stop the iso the camera rate all of that you have to know all of that because if not you can buy the camera and your, your video going to look just as bad as filming with a damn webcam. Because that was me. I had a Canon T5i and I didn't know how to use it until I got this damn camera. And I'm like, wow. All of this shit that I should have known did you know. You know? So, yeah. So, um, try not filming in 4K. Just use the HD. 
and maybe um, that will definitely take up a lot less space as well. And cinematic mode is actually pretty nice too. It blurs your background. It looks very, really nice. It gives you that nice little f-stop factor. Really, really nice shit. Um, and I think that's it. All right, perfect. So if there's no more uh, if there's no more questions, again, if those of you guys want to join the um, webinar on Tuesday, I believe it will wait. Is that Tuesday? Whatever date is, it is going to be linked in the description box. It's also pinned, I believe, in the um, comments. Thank you guys so much for joining. And this was a long one. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Um, I love you guys so very much because you guys actually stuck out with me. I apologize for making this like late. Um, again, I couldn't join the Facebook room, but to be quite honest with you, I prefer it on um, YouTube. So I'm going to be doing these on YouTube. I'll see you guys for next month. I think next month I'm going to be doing it on camera presence, how to be confident on camera, because I think that's really important as we go into the new year. Um, because yeah, everyone's going to be having their, I want to get to blah, blah, blah in the new year. So yeah, but who knows? It might be on something else. Usually I have people vote in my Facebook group. So yes, there's a closed media hustle Facebook group that you guys can join. It should be in the description box. If not, yeah, it should be. Sage has the zoomies guys. I apologize. But anyways, Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, do all that. I will see you guys if you come to the webinar. If not, I'll see you in the next upload. Lamb, bye.